and it's a stunning late summer's eve, uh, morning on the River Tees. And it's the end of the season, there's only a last three or four weeks of the trout season remaining. And the preceding days haven't been as kind as this weather-wise. The river has been up and down with rain. Uh, and after these periods of disturbed weather, we often get nice settled weather like this. And that means we get patches of pale waters at this time of the year, which are small, pale, pale white uh, to light olive mayflies, various species, but we collectively call them pale wateries. So today, it's time to do some of my favourite type of fly fishing, upstream dry fly fishing with a specific pattern. This is a pale watery uh, available at onstreamguide.com and this pattern is very successful at imitating the mayfly that will be hatching um, and hopefully one or two fish will rise. I've just spotted just upstream one or two fish rising and they'll be taking these pale wateries as they emerge. The dry fly setup is my trusty old Sage 389 light line. In my opinion, one of the best dry fly rods ever made. Uh, I have an on-string guide filled leader, which I have added some red mucilin to. And to the body of the fly, to the body of the pale watery fly, I'm going to add a little bit of gink. Just a touch of gink, just a drop onto the body, not onto the CDC fibres. Because if you put the gink onto the CDC fibres, uh, it loses the flotation quality, they have natural oils and so we try and maintain those natural oils and just add a little bit of gink to the body. At the end of the furl leader I've got about 5 feet of tippet, it's 3 pound breaking strain, about 0.12 millimetres and the only other thing I'll do with this outfit is add some of Richard Walker's as earth which I'll wet and add to the line to the last 10 inches to make sure the tippet sinks. As you can see it's very bright conditions, beautiful fishing conditions, uh, but the fish are very wary of tippet on the surface in these conditions so it's essential that you use a wetting agent. Uh, this is as I say Richard Walker's leader sink to get the tippet to sink so that the fish don't get tippet shy and see the tippet on the surface. It's a beautiful day, there's one or two fish rising already, so let's get some late or early, early autumn, late summer dry fly fishing done in the Ring of the Rise, Vincent Marinaro style. Let's go.
can't be much better on a beautiful summer's day like this. Dry fly fishing upstream, phenomenal. And two or three minutes fishing. And a nice fish rises in front of me there. Beautiful, beautiful grayling. And the section of stream I'm fishing is very heavily fished. It's adjacent to a campsite. And yesterday there were many anglers out fishing worms and spinners. But with targeted dry fly fishing, you can catch these fish that manage to avoid that sort of capture. And catch these beautiful, beautiful fish like this grayling. Beautiful fish. Goes back fit and strong. Play the fish out quickly. And there's one or two fish, more fish rising upstream. And I'm hoping we'll get a nice mix back today with some nice wild brown trout as well. So let's continue. As you've seen, we've just caught that grayling. Um, and the fly is wet and soggy and has uh, grayling slime, fish slime on it. And it's a CDC dry fly and many fly fishers aren't sure how to treat the fly to get it to float and they feel now that they need to change the fly. It's not true. What I'm going to do is show you exactly the way to get this fly back on top and fishing again, hopefully for some more fish, some trout or even more grayling. First of all, give the fly a good rinse to wash the slime and then We can use just a piece of kitchen roll. This is kitchen roll, uh, the sort that absorbs a lot of water. And you've seen on the adverts uh, various kitchen rolls with uh, elephant's trunks drawing up the water. Well, this is the same sort of stuff. And what I'm going to do is squeeze the fly first. Now, a lot of people use desiccants, various dry desiccants for this job. I'm not a big fan of that. Um, various aluminium containing chemicals, I don't think belong in a, in a river and this is a very simple and effective way of getting a CDC dry fly back to life. Now after I've squeezed it, it's already dry and looking nice and perky and then all I'll do is stroke back these fibres with the end of the tissue and there we have a perfect dry CDC fly ready to catch even more fish and on a beautiful day like today that's just what I'm going to do right now Missed that one, occasionally happens. He's still rising, which makes me suspect he's probably a grayling. And I put three or four very good covers over this fish. 
and he refused to play, which suggests to me he's probably not taking the odd pale watery coming off. Railing are very eclectic feeders, and one trick with railing is if they refuse your fly three or four times to change to a different type of fly. Now I've got this pale watery on, which is good imitation of many of the small flies coming off. But he's under a tree, and my guess is he's taking something very green and small, which is falling out of the tree. So what I'm going to do now is change the fly to something that fits that imitation and see if we can actually pull this fish. Although he's taken our fly once. Oh, there we go. And he made me a liar. And I managed to deceive him. And he's not a grayling after all. He's a lively trout. More lively tease trout, and his foul up, which suggests he probably splashed at the fly in annoyance. But because it's a barbless hook, it'll come to no harm. He's just hooked in the bottom of his fin. away. Absolutely no harm will come of that fish. Beautiful little fish. And he was rising there steadily away. He took the fly the first time and I missed him. And he came back and took it the second time. Aggressive splashy takes, which suggests he wasn't really taking that type of fly. It's, a type, it's an annoyance take. But it's a beautiful day and I'm catching these pristine trout and grayling. It is a wonderful last of the summer wine day and I'll move up into a slightly faster section and hopefully there'll be one or two fish rising up here and we'll put the icing on the cake for the day. Took it eventually. Line, line, line. Lovely little trout. Was playing games with me. Beautiful little fish. Playing games with me. Taking the fly, splashing at the fly, and eventually he succumbed. Beautiful little trout. Back he goes. And the conditions are very difficult, it's obviously very bright and I'm being extremely stealthy wading up the river and still able to pick off the odd fish or two 
and enjoy the conditions. Fantastic day. I'm sure there's one or two more left in here. Let's carry on. wild trout, beautiful fish in the sun, absolutely stunning. That fish there rose maybe 10 minutes ago. I rested, waited to see if he'd rise again, and he didn't, and I put a blind cover on, and up he came, he took the fly. The hatch is quite sparse, and of course I would probably Whoops, there he goes. I'd probably have more success nymphing, but on a day like this, targeted dry fly fishing is absolutely wonderful. Now I've seen one or two fish move just up ahead of me, and I'll have a go at those. Nelly, not this rock, the next one up. Oh, there we go. Oh. And the trout is too fast. Caught up with him. And the beauty of these barbless hooks, these are Chiemco barbless hooks I use, is that even on fish like that, the hook still holds. Stunning little wild brownie. Beautiful little teased trout. So as you've seen, that's the CDC fly that's just landed those few fish. It was much, much tougher than I expected. The hatch was very sparse, with very few fish rising. But we managed a few. Targeted dry fly fishing can be like that. It's always difficult technical fishing, and that's what makes it interesting. And I'm going to finish the day, this couple of hour session, on this nice pocket ahead of me. And this is the CDC dry that I've been using. I haven't changed it all day. Still perfect, ready to use for the next session and I'm going to change it to Altros LK Caddis for the last couple of casts in this pocket water behind me. Uh, a bigger fly works better in pocket water, an attractive fly, something to grab the fish's attention and bring them up. So let's have a couple of casts at the end of the day using the LK Caddis. <laughs> 